uh, welcome, welcome to this workshop that has been arranged at very short notice and a lot of people have volunteered to give talks I was very happy to see that some of the topics looked uh, really, really exciting and interesting. So, I thought I will take about 5 or 10 minutes, do I have 10 minutes, so which it disappears at the exact time uh, when I need to. So, to just discuss uh, one short problem that uh, I keep thinking about these days, these days my research time is very minimal, number of students is asymptotically tending to 0, there is only one student actually, <laughs> so, so for various uh, good reasons, but still anyway, so there is one problem that I am working on, this is not purely math, a little bit of stats, much more stats than math, but nevertheless it is all math, right, everything is math, so hopefully you will uh, you'll like this little bit of an introduction. Uh, but I have to warn you, this serious math research is uh, very different these days, people work on very abstract, very, very far removed from uh, practice type problems quite often, there is also problems that are very close to uh, practice. So, you can pick and choose what you like and there is wide variety out there and the problem that I will discuss is actually uh, very much a part of, why? Why should I be in full screen? I, I, I want to write. It's okay. okay. This is good. So, um, uh, I was saying something, my train of thought was interrupted. Anyway, so, uh, coming back to this uh, little problem I want to discuss, it is uh, it's a nice question. It is part of uh, many applications that you might actually use on your cell phone and all that. But at the same time, it is a topic for research today in, in various learning stats uh, type uh, situations, ok. So, let me get started. So, the question goes something like this, it is actually a very old question. Supposing I give you a sequence of letters, right. So, let us say A, B, A, C, B, uh, D, A, C, ok. Let us let us leave it like that. So, it is 7 letters, not too many, but anyway. So, it is 7 letters, give you a sequence of letters. And then I, I want you to say something about what could the next letter be, ok. So, this sounds like a very silly problem I and mean, like, it seems like I have not, I have not uh, uh, restricted it to anything really interesting and uh, what, what is it that you can say based on just some 7 things that you saw. Maybe, maybe in, in real life when you use it, you might see 700 things, 70,000 things, but, but I am just giving you a toy example where you just saw these 7 things and I am interested in the chance that the next letter will be new, ok. The, the, the first people to sort of study these two problems are uh, Good and Turing way back in World War II time, ok. Why were they interested in this in World War II, you may ask. Okay, they, they, at that time they were cracking a cipher called the Enigma cipher, both of them were working very hard and that was a hard problem to, a hard function to uh, find an inverse of without knowing something called the key, which is a key that uh, somebody, some German captain on the other side picks and uh, they had some access to previous keys, maybe they had some method which took a long time to decrypt, but by the time they decrypt the key, what happens? The key has been changed for the next day by the captain. So, so, they wanted to be able to predict based on their prior knowledge what would be the next key, right. And in particular, they, they looked at so many different problems around this question, but one question they asked is what is the probability that the next key will be new, it will not be repeated. They also saw that sometimes the key got repeated, ok. So, this is how it worked and uh, you, you want to be able to predict the chance or come up with a number for saying what is the probability that the next letter will be new. So, they came up with an estimator for that, it is uh, in my opinion, it is a very surprisingly effective and simple estimator. Many of the things, many of the math that has applications in practice ends up being so surprisingly elegant and simple. So, here is one such uh, answer. The estimator that they came up with is number of letters that appear once, appear exactly once, ok, divided by total number of letters. So, in this case total number of letters you saw so far is 7, denominator is the easiest thing to calculate, the numerator is also not that hard, but maybe you need to stare at it for a little while. So, what would be the numerator? So far there is only 1, 
think there is two right C and D are there. So, so this for this example ends up being 2 by 7 ok. So, so how did they come up with this and why is this any good right. So, this is a question that you can ask. Now, here is where you can do a sort of a mathematical model probabilistic model and in within that model you can show uh, that this kind of an estimator can be reasonably effective. So, here is uh, here is the model, the model goes as follows, they said uh, you know the letters that you see, those of you who did stats 2 might have seen this, uh, this kind of a description. They said the letters that you saw could have come IID from some distribution, ok. So, you do not know what the distribution is, you want to make very little assumptions about the distribution, right, because the like who knows the distribution with which the German captain is picking Enigma passwords, right. So, you do not want to make too many strong assumptions about it, but maybe this IID is not too bad, you know, maybe the German captain has a method that every day that he repeats and maybe there is a reason why you, you might want to think it is IID, but you do not want to say too much about what this distribution is. So, so you can say you know it may have a lot of letters, the letter x may be occurs with some probability p x. I do not want to say too much more, I do not want to say how many letters are there, how many things are there. So, this is this could be a model and in this model you can talk about what is it that they want to estimate, right. They want to estimate what is the probability that the next letter is new, right. You can write down this very clever little, so this one maybe I will call this as uh, some script text which is the alphabet, ok. So, I can write down the probability they want to estimate as something called the missing mass, ok. So, what is missing mass? So, this is missing mass m0 which is summation over all x in script x indicator that x did not appear. That okay, appear where in in this uh, in this x one to x. Okay, what is indicator now? Indicator of an event is it's a function that gives out zero or a one. If this event happened, it makes it one. And if the event did not happen, it makes it zero. Okay, so I want to I want to find this, but this only gives me the number, right? I I don't want just the number. I want the chance of getting these things new. So, you can just do this ok. For every x if it did not appear and the indicator becomes 1, I want to multiply that indicator with p x. So, I will get p x. So, this becomes the total mass that is missing in my samples and this is also the probability that, that the next letter is going to be new something that you did not see. So, this is called missing mass ok. And uh, like I said, this is an old problem, several statisticians have studied it later, but the first people to study it and even now the predominant estimator is the good Turing estimator. And how does that estimator work? M0 hat, I will call it GT, which is after good Turing. This is going to go as, this is 1 by n, this is easy, right? n comes in the denominator, total number of letters. How do you write number of letters that appear once? You can write it using this indicator function, no? So, you can say summation x in script x indicator that x appears once. Is that ok? Right? So, so at this point if you stop you have you only written a mathematical description of what was uh, said and then you put out a model there. The model you may or may not like, but usually the ma any many serious problem if you want to make good theoretical progress, you have to have a model which is sort of reasonably close. You, sh you should be sure that it is reasonably close, but no model in real life will ever agree with actual situations. So, you, you make it robust to those things, ok. So, what, what you do uh, in real life is for modeling involves various techniques like that, but let us just see what happens to this guy, ok. So, I will do a very quick calculation to show why these two are uh, reasonably close. The way we see it as, uh, so, so the, what we will show is the following, ok. So, we will look at expected value of m0, ok, right. If I do expected value, I know expected value behaves well with summation, it can go in and this px is a constant. So, it is going to come out. So, I need expected value of indicator of x did not appear. Indicator x did not appear takes only two values 0 and 1. So, it is just 1 times the probability that x did not appear. Right. So, this will I am going very quick here, I do not have too much time, but anyway. So, this will end up being 
1 minus px power n because this is the probability that x did not appear okay this is probability that x did not appear is that okay and then you can also do expected value for m0 hat gt okay a lot of estimation can be done like this okay if you can manage to come up with an estimator which in expected value is going to be close to what you want to estimate you have already done a lot in complicated problems more or less that is all you can do. If you can come close in expected value is good enough and many of these kind of things have this concentration property around expectation. I think I talk about it a little bit in my lectures I do not know if you appreciated that or not too much but they all go close to the constant expected value. So, if you can hit the expected value you are also hitting the value uh, what you want to estimate most often ok. So, this is good enough. So, if you do this guy you will get this uh, curious little expression right. So, 1 by n will be there and then you will have the summation over x indicator that x appears once. So, that is probability when you do expected value because probability that x appears once and that if you think about it for a while will be this guy right. This is like a binomial summation right. Every time x appears with probability p x does not appear with probability 1 minus p x it is this guy and you see notice how similar this is looking to the expectation that I want to hit right. So, this is m 0 I want to find this is looking very close. You can do a little bit of an exercise to show that these two are within 1 by n of each other. It is not too hard a calculation. You can split it into 2 and I am not going to do that simplification here. I will stop here for the expo, you know, just explanation of where it comes from. So, these two guys are within 1 by n of each other. So, now why is that 1 by n good? Because if I have 1000 samples, I can predict the chance with good Turing estimator in expectation within 1 by 1000 of what it could have been. So, these are the nice sort of things you can do. So, now good Turing uh, did not do this analysis. This analysis was done much later about 80 or so 1980s along with the concentration and all these things. Uh, then uh, later on what uh, I have done with the student of mine is to show the mean square error of this estimator also falls as 1 by n. A mean square error involves variance along with uh, bias. So, you have to do some additional calculations you can show the, the, the mean square error falls as 1 by n as well. So, that is good to see and one of the problems that my student is trying to work on is what if you change the model. So, in reality you want to have bigger models ok. So, so now another thing to notice is this 1 by n works for any distribution you do not have to make any assumption on x or p x or anything the, the bounding you can show you can just manipulate this to show that this these two are within 1 by n or each other of each other and you do not need any assumption, but you still assumed i i d right maybe that is not good enough. Uh, so, one of my students is trying to work on relaxing the IID assumption to something like Markov. So, if you say it is Markov then what can you say about estimating of estimation of missing mass ok. Anyway, so hopefully this is a good start to a math workshop and I did not uh, bore everybody to death uh, with this. Let me also stop sharing so people will see me on the big screen. Uh, but uh, thanks a lot for showing up once again. Thanks for putting up with my little bit of an explanation of some problem that I am working on uh, part time whenever, whenever I find time. Any questions on what I described? People are happy? Ok. Good. Thanks once again and over to the rest of the speakers. Have a, have a wonderful day. Enjoy your uh, math workshop. I wish I could spend more time here. There's some other things happening, so I'll have to be out. One comment, sir. What you explained just went all over my head. Ah, so. uh, yeah, that's that's also good. It's, it's nice. I, it's good. Okay, thank you. <laughs>